The Dorset coast is found to the south of England. And if we have a look at this counties map to the right, Dorset is here sandwiched between Devon and Hampshire, and this is the Dorset coastline. This part here between Devon and Dorset, Dorset is known as the Jurassic coast, but we're going to be concentrating on the coast of Dorset. Now in this PowerPoint, we're going to be looking at these two things. We're going to be looking at the landforms that are being created, and we're going to look at the influence of geology and climate on the processes that are creating our landforms. Now, all a landform is, is a recognisable shape that we can see. So in the picture, here is a stack that I recognise and over here is a cliff that I recognise. Now that's all a landform is, just a shape you recognise. Um, natural processes um, are also called geomorphic processes. Um, don't be worried about the word geomorphic, it just means what is nature doing um, geology means the type of rock. Um, now in this PowerPoint, we're mainly looking at whether the rocks are harder and more resistant, or are they softer and weaker? Will they just fall away through the action of geomorphic processes? Um, this is the area that we're concentrating on. This is the Dorset coast, and we're going to be looking at four landforms. We're going to be looking at sandbanks, an example of a spit. We're going to be looking at Old Harry. Um, an example of a stack. We're going to be looking at Swanage Bay and then over here to the west we're going to be looking at the arch Durdle Door. So without further ado let's start with our first one which is Swanage Bay. Now Swanage Bay is sandwiched between two headlands. You've got Ballard Point over here, Dilston Head over here and bays are formed where there is soft rock like clays and sands that erodes away quicker between two bands of hard rock. This leaves the hard rock sticking out as headlands and the soft rock has been eroded away as a bay. Um, so what geomorphic processes are involved? Well waves from the sea are eroding away the rock mainly through hydraulic action and abrasion. What is the influence of geology? Well, the softer rocks erode away quicker, leaving the bay, and the harder rocks erode away slower, leaving the headland. What's the influence of climate um, on the creation of bays and headlands? Well, if you have strong winds that are created that come across the Atlantic Ocean, then they create large waves. These large waves create more erosion. Um, bad storms can erode away lots of rock, they're especially bad in 2014. Let's move on. Um, we also on the Dorset coast have the stack known as Old Harry. Um, this is Old Harry, this rock sticking up out of the sea um, at the end of that headland. Now, stacks form where you have a headland, um, a crack forms which erodes into a cave, the cave can puncture its way all the way through the headland, forming an arch, and then eventually the roof of the arch can collapse, leaving a stack. So again, what are the processes involved? The waves are doing erosion. Um, the roof of the arch over here um, is attacked by the action of the weather. Um, frost action, freeze-thaw weathering. Um, could be responsible for collapsing the roof of the arch. Um, what's the influence of geology? Well, this headland sticking out into the sea, Handfast Point, is made of chalk, which is a more resistant rock. Um, whilst clays and sands have been eroded away around the headland, the resistant rock has been left sticking out. So, um, what's the influence? Well, these structures are quite tough, quite resilient, erosion takes a long time on them but creates these spectacular features. What's the influence of climate? Well again, strong winds create large waves that erode the headland, but also the weathering processes are speeded up if it's very wet, there's a lot of rainfall and there is a lot of wind. Here is another landform, an arch, uh, this is called D Durdle Door. 
And again, I'm putting the same picture up. The arch has formed because the crack has eroded into the cave and then the cave has punctured its way through the headland. Um, but let's have a look at the processes involved specifically with Durdle Door. So we've got erosion and weathering, as we've mentioned earlier. Um, but this time, geology, Durdle Door is made of limestone, um, the more resistant rock. What's the influence of climate? Again, strong winds create large waves um, that do the erosion and rainfall and wind are helping to weather um, the roof of the arch. Now we're going to have a look at a spit. This is called Sandbank Spit in the mouth of Pool Harbour. Spits are created because swash and backwash move material along a coastline. And then this material is deposited out into the sea, creating this ridge of land stretching out into the water. Let's have a look at the processes affecting Sandbank Spit. Well, Longshore drift is the swash and backwash, which is moving the material along the coastline, specifically from east to west um, in this um, situation. Deposition is the process where rocks are dropped down to the bottom of the sea. The influence of geology is that sandbank spit is made out of sand, and this sand has come from the Bournemouth cliffs. The influence of climate is that the wind direction is responsible for moving the material from east to west and the stronger the wind, the more rapidly the material is moved. Here's a summary of the four landforms that we've looked at. Um, in this video, um, we've been looking at the examples quite quickly. If you want more information about the formation of bays or stacks or arches or spits, please have a look at my other videos.